Well, this was the story that probably changed my life on my mission. Uh, it probably made the biggest difference on how I saw how I saw my mission and how I, my mission affected my life. And uh, I want to be careful about the way that I explain it. <clears throat> First of all, to understand kind of where I was coming from uh, up in, up until the end of my mission, with only a couple of days left two days left before I went home. I looked back on my mission and I thought to myself, have I been, have I been a successful missionary? Have I um, done all that the Lord wanted me to do? Have I um, raised my, to His expectations? Have I been obedient enough? Have I worked hard enough? Have I touched enough people's lives? And I looked back over my mission asking myself these questions. And I thought to myself, um, I could have, I could have done better. This point in my mission, I, I should have been a better companion to that companion. I should have been a better missionary at that point. I, I could have done this better. Maybe there were some times I was afraid of my mission. I didn't talk to people that I thought I should have, or maybe I felt an impression that I didn't follow, and then it was tearing at me a little bit. And I thought to myself. I, I don't know if I, if I would consider myself a successful missionary um, or an obedient enough missionary. I don't know if I would consider myself um, good enough. And so two days left of my mission, the time had passed and there was nothing more that I could do, almost. It was just a couple of days left. We had put together this uh, program. I was, uh, I was with there were four missionaries, us, we were living together, and the four of us were, we were all North American missionaries, and all of us uh, had some musical talent. So with the four of us decided we were going to put together a, a fireside for the members and the investigators in the stake. And this was at a stake center where I had spent the majority of my mission, um, 16 months of my mission in the stake, uh, in three of the different areas, and in, in two of the areas I served twice. And so uh, I had served for over a year in, these, uh, in, this, in this zone, in this stake. And so we had a stake fireside. So many of the people in the, in the stake, I knew them personally, and I had had experiences with them. And, and I had been in their houses, and they had fed me lunch, and they had given me references. And, and some of them I had, I had baptized. And... and um, and it was, uh, it was just a good experience where a lot of the people that I loved most in my mission were there. This was in Bogota. And uh, so there we were. We put on this, this beautiful fireside that we, that we uh, a music fireside that we had prepared. Um, we got a, a, we were able to scrounge up a guitar and a violin and a harmonica. And I played harmonica and, uh, and one of my companions, Elder Fife, played the violin and Elder McIntyre played guitar, Elder Jones played piano, and the four of us together put together these songs where we kind of took the audience on a journey, we took the, uh, the congregation on a journey from, of the life of Joseph Smith and the history of the church, where we told the first vision story. We, we played a little fiddle music there at the beginning. This was, um, this was on a Sunday night, um, and the church was packed. And we played a little bit of like old folk tunes there at the beginning to get them all in the mood. And then we started telling the Joseph Smith story with a big projector up at the back where you saw Joseph Smith live his life, asking the questions, uh, what, what is the church, the true church, and, and how that led into the restoration. And uh, this big peace and reverence fell over everyone, and, uh, and everybody uh, felt the spirit there. From from there, we led on to the church history. We showed a little bit from the film, The 17 Miracles. We, we showed a, a couple of clips from there, and we told stories and sang songs about the, the saints going west and about the, the church growing and about missionary work. And it was all just very beautiful, and we, we all sang, and we, and we played instruments, and, and there was beautiful, beautiful music. When it was over, I, I ended with a with the song, Oh My Soul Hungered. Um, I sang this solo to the congregation. 
and I sat down and the whole audience or the whole congregation was just this, with this calm and peacefulness over everybody and I'm sitting here looking out on the people that I love and thinking about my mission it's the two years they 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 went by quickly and thinking what what's going to happen to me now and I only had two days left and Elder Fife one of my companions he stood up and we had a, he he had been a very close friend on my mission he stood up and he got to the pulpit and uh, and uh, in this moment of reverence this moment of quiet he said to everybody um, uh, Elder Fifield's going to be going home in a couple of days and I'm really going to miss him because he's he's meant a lot to me and he's been a very good friend um, and uh and he knew that that I was struggling a little bit, or I don't think that I told him, but he must have felt something. Anyways, he he did something that night that really changed my life. And he looked out on the at the congregation, and he said, um, "Maybe Elder Fifield didn't baptize the most people, but I know that he was a successful missionary, and uh, I know that that he changed people's lives." He said, "I want to do something tonight." everybody who's here um, if um, if you have felt that that Elder Fifield touched your life in some way I want you to stand up and uh, the, the majority almost everybody there in the room immediately stood up on their feet and uh, and looked at me and it was just an overwhelming moment in my life where I couldn't I couldn't hold back the tears because because I knew that that God was proud of me because I had touched their lives and I had been able to show my love to them and I wasn't a perfect missionary but I didn't have to be perfect I just I loved the people and I loved those people and I was able to make a difference in their lives and so seeing all of those people stand on their feet as a as a as an act of as a tribute to me, as a an act of love towards me, it it changed the way I saw my whole mission, and I knew then that that my mission wasn't a failure. That my mission was it was that God was proud of me for what I had done in those two years, and that I could be I could be okay with that, with not being perfect, and and with having done my best, and so and. That was a, that was just a beautiful experience on my mission. Um, Elder Fife is giving his homecoming talk this Sunday. I'm excited to go see him. Uh, so um, that's uh, that is probably the the event of my mission that I feel changed my life more than anything. 